Hey, what's up, my nerds? I'm Air Bear. And I'm Chasen, and you're just in time for your weekly dose of nerd news. Clink. Clink. Today is Saturday, January 27th, and this is what happened this week, starting things off with this past week. <laughs> it is official. The Oscar nominations are in! And um, may not be surprised to hear that Oppenheimer kind of stole the show with 13 nominations um, followed up closely by Poor Things. There may be some surprises coming, so let's hear about those. All right, so Barbie, unfortunately, did not receive, or there has been some upset um, about Gerda, Ger Gerda Gerwig not receiving a nomination for Best Director for Barbie. Also, Margot Robbie did not receive a nomination for Best Actress for Barbie. But Ryan Gosling did get nominated for Ken. Um, America Ferreira did get nominated for Best Supporting Actress. And Barbie was nominated for Best Picture. So let's talk about some more nominees. In the animated category, the nominees are The Boy and the Herring, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And for visual effects, those nominees are The Creator, Godzilla Minus One, Glad... No, I was thinking Gladiator 3? <laughs> what happened to 2? I know! Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy 3, I assume. Okay, cool. <laughs> Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy 3, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, and Napoleon. And for original score, those nominees are Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Oppenheimer, and some others. In the category of original song, some of the nominees are I'm Just Ken, What Was I Made For, both of those from Barbie, from the Barbie movie, and The Fire Inside from Flaming Hot. In the category of cast costume design some of the nominees were barbie napoleon oppenheimer poor things and killer of the flower moon and under category of sound which i'm guessing based on the movies that are in this category means like not just music but like sound. um yeah the sounds sound that you hear in the movie yeah sound production i guess yeah. uh the creator maestro mission impossible dead reckoning Oppenheimer and Zone of Interest. And under the category of production design, some of the nominees are Barbie, Oppenheimer, and then, you know, the usual movies. So I think Oppenheimer might be nominated for every category except like the animated, small film. Probably. Yeah, and, and animated. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that Barbie, like, I haven't seen the other movies, but Barbie had an incredible production design, I would say. Like, it looked like you were in Barbie yeah. world. Yeah, and they were nominated, right? Yeah, okay. They were nominated. Better have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, movie news announcements. So filming for Deadpool 3 has wrapped up. They're still I mean, it's not being released until July 26th, but um the filming at least is wrapped up. And Ryan Reynolds in true Deadpool form released a thank you message to the crew and cast which included a picture of Deadpool's iconic crotch. So if you're interested in that, be sure to take a look at it. And uh, Hugh Jackman also released a, well, posted a thank you to the crew and cast as well. And like I said, if you're interested in, in that movie, be sure to check it out on July 26. Also nearing end of completion on filming is Mortal Kombat 2, as Carl Urban has finished filming his part for the movie. Carl Urban, as a reminder, played Bones on Star Trek, well, the Star Trek reboots, yeah. and um, he will be playing Johnny Cage in the Mortal Kombat sequel. No release date has been announced for that movie. And, oh man, speaking of things not being released, Netflix is not going to be releasing Mothership, which was a Holly Berry sci-fi film. The premise of it was it's going to it was going to um, follow Sarah Morse, Holly Berry, one year after her husband mysteriously vanished from their rural farm, when she discovered a strange extraterrestrial object underneath their home, and the adventure ensues. But like I said, that's not being released. Uh, the film was in post-production, but according to a source, the mothership was facing delays um, during post-production and just couldn't be completed. Now, for those who might be concerned about Holly Berry and Netflix, 
it looks like their relationship's still going strong. Ali Berry has some other projects that are still in the works there. And if this sounds familiar, <laughs> <laughs> you might remember that Warner Brothers was um, doing something similar. It happened with um, Coyote versus Acme and Batgirl, where they actually canceled a show that was <coughs> sounded like it was much closer to being completed or was completed entirely. I think some a couple of them, I think they were completed. Um, which launched some red flags and Congressman Joaquin Castro called for an investigation for Warner Brothers Discovery. Not saying that Netflix was thrown into that same camp as far as being investigated, but it sounds like a trend, <laughs> perhaps. Steven Yoon from Walking Dead and Beef is stepping away from his role in Thunderbolts because of schedule conflicts. Yoon was set to play Sentry in the upcoming Marvel film, but had to get out of the role because the movie was pushed back past 2024 because of the writer strikes and the actor strikes. He will be replaced by Lewis Pullman, who had a role in the recent Top Gun, Ma Top Gun Maverick movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Henry Cavill has announced that he is getting back in, well, I guess, starting a new training regiment for the new Highlander. I'm sorry, <laughs> Highland reboot. <laughs> At first I read, I read it as Highlander and I was like, oh snap, okay. But Highland, whatever that is, I don't know what it is. But <clears throat> it might be Highlander. I don't know. I might have misspelled it. Could it be? Let's see. All right. I'll look this up right now. So it's gonna be Henry. 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 Henry Cavill. Cavill. Highlander. It is Highlander. Okay. Color mm. me interested, because I saw Highland and I was like, no idea what that is. Thank you for doing the research for this, mm -hmm. by the way. Oh yeah, look, we could have just hovered over it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. I have to tell my dad about that. He used to watch Highlander. But anyway, that's coming out to. Sure Hmm? I said, I don't know if I used to watch it or not. Mm. I get that confused with the other one where, like, the only way you could kill them was to cut off their heads. That's Highlander. Okay. I used to watch that, but, like, vaguely remember it. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was a movie, too, wasn't there? Uh, a couple movies, yeah. Okay. Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Cool, 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 cool. Highlander is um, set to be released in 2026. And Cavill also stated that production on his Warhammer project is going very well, that there are big things happening and that they are very excited. Universal is working on a new Jurassic World movie. It may release sometime next year. Steven Spielberg will be executive producer on it. And they're going to be including David Cope, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, who will be the screenwriter, who was the screenwriter for the original Jurassic Park movie that came out in 1993 and the sequel, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Good things. Yeah. TV announcements. John Boyega is set to star in a TV series that's a prequel to the movie, The Book of Eli. And um, for those that remember, The Book of Eli came out in 2010 and starred Denzel Washington as Eli. So Boyega is going to portray a younger version of Eli and it's currently in development. If you're wondering, the movie was considered a box office success. It brought in $157 million with a budget of only $80 million. Netflix has announced that Squid Game season two will premiere sometime this year. They announced this during their annual earnings report. They also had some other announcements that will come out that we'll announce later. But other shows that they included in this lineup of movies coming out soon is Bridgerton Season 3, Empress Season 2, and Diplomat Season 2. I don't know if I said movies, but I meant shows. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's talk about another show, not video game, although the video game is amazing. HBO's The Last of Us 2 has brought on four additional um, directors to have their own episodes. And those directors are Kate Heron from Loki Season 1, uh, Mark Myloff from Succession, Stephen Williams from Watchmen, and Nina Lopez-Carado from Perry Mason. 
TV trailers. Oh, there are two big ones for us anyway. Yes. Netflix live action Avatar trailer is here. Yes, baby. It is releasing February 22nd. The trailer is amazing. Oh Goosebumps. All yes. over my body. Yes, 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 yes. Also, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live <laughs> show final trailer is out as well. And season three of The Bad Batch. The trailer was dropped. I'm excited. I'm excited for February. That that week of February. That's going to be a big week. Yep. Okay, so um, in any case. So we need to get done with get, Hogwarts. Got to get done Hogwarts, with so Hogwarts. Look at see. Consider where we're gonna, whether we're going to start uh, Red Dead Redemption. We're not. Okay. <laughs> Decision made. And um, probably watch some stuff. Definitely watch Bad Batch. Oh, okay. For Yes. Yeah, yes. we're not watching anything from Avatar because that is too long. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Once we start, we're going to... We're gonna want to finish. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, season three of Bad Batch is coming to Disney Plus on February twenty first, and looks like it's gonna come with a three episode premiere. So excited. Okay. In event news, so in the video post, Disney has announced that their employee Lanny Smoot will be the second Disney employee to be inducted into the National Adventures Hall of Fame. The first being Walt Disney himself, of course. So, in the video, Lanny Smoot revealed a new hollow tile floor, which could potentially be a well, which could potentially enhance VR experiences. According to Disney, the hollow tile floor is the world's first multi-person, omnidirectional, modular, expandable treadmill floor. And what it does is it works on keeping people in the center while they move so you can walk in any direction and it'll keep you in the center of the um, space, floor tile section. It can also move things that are on top of it around. So like if you, like in the video, they had a block of wood on it and it looked like he was using the force to move the block of wood around. So yeah, looks pretty cool. Pretty sci-fi, super future tech. <laughs> yeah, it, um, especially with the VR experience being tied to it, it reminded me so much of Ready Player One. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had, they had something similar and um, you know, they had clips to kind of, they didn't, the video didn't, but people in the comments had clips of, oh, it must be something like this. And, uh, it looks a lot cooler than what I saw in Ready Player One. Like what I saw in the clip for Ready Player One, paled in comparison to what this thing, <laughs> what this, actually what this is. thing was and what it could do. Um, yeah, very, very cool. And just a quick thing about Lanny Smoot, which I learned today. He's got like a hundred or over a hundred patents to his name and 70 of them or so were with Disney. So very impressive guy. He's also an African-American inventor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in a couple of days, got a whole month of uh, <laughs> getting to know him a little better. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about Netflix. Netflix has reported its full year earnings um, and apparently... The password crackdown, which we reported on last year, has caused a 13 million subscriber increase over the last year, and they've also gotten a 12.5% increase in year-over-year -year revenue, so it sounds like things are looking good for Netflix. Happy to hear about that. And Netflix is, well, <coughs> planning on continuing <laughs> to raise prices as they, in their words, invest in, invest in and improve Netflix they're going to occasionally ask members to pay a little extra to reflect those improvements, which makes sense to me. <laughs> Just don't personally like it. While it doesn't love it, but as long as we're making improvements and I can see those improvements. But here's the thing though. If I'm paying more, I want my shows faster. Like I don't need to be waiting this long for- Zom 100. Zom 100 to get some dubbed or episodes. for, um, uh, I can only think of the Japanese name, which I can't, Demon oh, Slayer. Oh, 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 For Demon Slayer to come out. Or for that show that we were talking about the other day, The Repair Shop. Where did that go? Oh, the repair Why are shop. they not still following those people? Yes, I am not chuffed to bits <laughs> with that show. 
if I'm paying extra for this stuff, I expect better of you, Netflix. Well, okay. I expect better. <laughs> there should never be at any point when I'm waiting for something. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I should always have something to watch have on Netflix. I need right now at all times. Okay, <laughs> you want to charge me a dollar more per month? You better. You better step work up. for that you better dollar. <laughs> you better work for these dollars, man. I'm not just throwing dollars. I work hard for my money. You better too. Come on, drop it. Like it's hot. The shows, of course. Drop the shows. I didn't even finish my <laughs> announcement. We got so heated. Okay, so <clears throat> Netflix has also announced mm -hmm. that it's planning to phase out its basic plan. That's the $11.99 plan that's ad-free. And they are focusing more on ad-based plans. So read into that what you want to read into it. But there you go. All right, and gaming news. Starting off with announcements. <laughs> Resolution Games, who <laughs> made Demio, I haven't heard of that game, is working on a Dungeons and Dragons VR game. It's going to be set in the Dungeons and Dragons world and include some of the characters. Apparently, which you might eventually come across, Baldur's Gate, I think, has something to do with Dungeons and Dragons. It was mentioned in the article as if it was related. Y'all can comment oh. below. Interesting. Is that something you're going to see on your campaign? Possibly, since I started doing Dungeons and Dragons a little while ago. That's that's a thing, right? Started doing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, sorry, Dungeoning and Dragoning. Dungeoning and Dragoning, yeah. <laughs> Dungeoning um, Dragons. Oh, I just started Dungeoning those dragons, man. <laughs> can't escape without getting dungeoned. All right. <laughs> Terrible segue. Um... I didn't say it, but anyway, Call of Duty has launched an anti-toxicity voice detection system, software, for their online games. And apparently since the program has been running, there's been an 8% decrease in repeat offenders and a 50% reduction in players being exposed to severe instances of toxic chat since Modern Warfare 3 launched in November 2023. And so it sounds like some of the things that they're targeting is, um, I mean, not just being rude, but racial specifically slurs. like racial slurs and um, religious slurs. slurs about, you know, yeah, religion and faith and all that jazz. Um, but interestingly enough, only one in five people have reported toxic speech when its own system has caught the instances. So Activision has mentioned that game gamer reporting is key to improving the system. And all of this is in an effort, according to uh, Activision, to make sure that Call of Duty is fair and fun for all. All right, in, oh, none of this is me. <laughs> trailers, game trailers. I got this. Take it away. Here we go. All <laughs> about Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. They've uh, apparently dropped two trailers. Um, I mean, on top of all the other trailers that they have. Mm -hmm. So if you want trailers, you're not going to be hurting for trailers. But in these recent trailers, the official deluxe edition trailer um, showed some cool stuff that you can get. One of which is actually Justice League outfits for Harlequin and um, Captain Boomerang and the others. And the other... Trailer is a live action spot trailer with some familiar faces from the Batverse. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just leave it there because I only know one name and I don't want to mispronounce the other one. So <laughs> we'll just leave it there for you to discover. And if you're hoping to discover the game and how much fun it is or isn't, who knows? <laughs> you can check that game out on uh, February 2nd, 2024 in just a few days. And that's going to be on PS4. Five Xbox SX and PC. Rumor mill. All right. So James Gunn is working on finding, well, James Gunn's DCU, because apparently that's the title now. <laughs> like, what was it? Um, the artist formerly named. No, 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 no. The um, 
Zack Snyder's. Oh, the Snyderverse? Yeah, Snyderverse. Ah, so yeah, okay, okay, okay. James, James Gunn's DCU is working on That's finding funny. its Supergirl. Um, reportedly, Millie Alcock and Meg Donnelly are undergoing screen tests, mm. according to some. The character, the character of Supergirl, according to Gunn, will appear in Super Superman Legacy, or I guess be introduced in Superman Legacy, and then will have her own movie in Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Millie Alcock. Uh, plays Raina, nope, Rhaenyra Targaryen in House of the Dragon, and Meg Donnelly voiced Supergirl in the animated Legion of Superheroes and also in the Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths, the trilogy. I'm fairly sure it was a trilogy of animated movies. Mm. And she also played in um, some of the Zombies franchise movies. Very cool. All right. So... We know it's top of the month. However, it's a very busy time of year. That didn't happen. We don't have top of the month, so. But we do have movies releasing this upcoming week. <laughs> January 27th to February 3rd. Starting off with Pacific Rim will be coming to Netflix on February 1st. Also coming to Netflix on February 1st is gonna be Tom and Jerry. And Orion and the Dark, which is about a boy with an active imagination as he faces his fears on an unforgettable journey through the night with his friend, a giant smiling creature named Dark. That's coming to Netflix on February 22nd. And speaking of omnidirectional pads, treadmills, that's the word I'm looking for. Omnidirectional treadmills, Ready Player One is coming to Netflix on February 3rd. Now let's talk about TV shows. Because <laughs> I was going to go ahead and announce it. And I was like, that's not my job. Because I always take it from you. So I Sometimes just took a do. deep breath. Sometimes you do. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And you. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's talk about TV shows that are going to be released this upcoming week. Starting with Alexander, The Making of a God. It's going to be a documentary that tells the fascinating story of how exiled an exiled warrior became a legend. That's coming to Netflix on January 31st. Seven Deadly Sins for Knights of the Apocalypse Part 1, which is an anime, um, will be coming to Netflix on January 31st. And it is, the synopsis for it is, as a prophecy of doom unfolds on the peaceful land of Britannia, a pure-hearted boy sets out on a journey of discovery and revenge. Ooh. And Grounded 2, the making of The Last of Us Part 2, the video game. That documentary is coming to YouTube, and it's going to be a part of a downloadable patch for The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. That's going to be dropping February 2nd. And the TV series Mr. and Mrs. Smith will be coming to Prime Video on February 2nd. Well... This has been your weekly dose of nerd news. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next week for more nerdiness. I'm Air Bear. And I'm Jason. Thanks for watching. Clink. Clink.